Welcome back everyone to my Kaido Theory series. If you guys haven't checked out parts 1 or 2, make sure to check them out because there will be overlapping information. So I recommend that you check those out before you watch this one. Also, because we will be discussing Emerald City today, I recommend that you check out everything One Piece's Emerald City Theory because he lays out a lot of cool facts and, and foundations for a lot of Emerald City theories that people have been talking about lately. So definitely check that out too. Now today, uh, in order to get to the Emerald City, uh, I recommend that we start uh, in the present, where we are right now, in Dressrosa, and uh, let's see what's going on in there. Now aside from the main conflicts between the Straw Hat Alliance and the Don Quixote family, there's a major underlying subplot that involves the trading of these illegal weapons that's causing wars to break out throughout the entire world. And if you guys remember, the main reason that the revolutionaries are there is to try to stop this illegal trade and possibly destroy the, uh, the factory that's manufacturing these illegal weapons. Now, thanks to the Caribou side story, we know where that factory is. It's not on Dressrosa, but it's actually on Kaido's favorite island, the same island I've been talking about for the past two parts, and so that's what I want to talk about today. Now, seeing as how the Straw Hats on Dressrosa are pretty much stranded at the moment without any ships, I do believe that they will catch a ride with Sabo's ship, and I do believe that the two of them will travel together until they reach that winter island. Now. Unfortunately, I do believe that they're not going there immediately, that there are some islands in between. Uh, first off, you know, Zo, I think, would be the first island that they go to uh, because you have to, you know, catch up with Law's crew. You have to catch up maybe with Sanji and the rest of Sunny Go. Maybe they'll meet them at Zo. And most importantly, we have to know what's going on exactly with Kinemon. You know, we, we met him in Punk Hazard. We're here in Dressrosa. Now I think it's time that we fi uh, find out what's going on with him and Wano Kuni. Now, if you guys remember the news article that I talked about a couple days ago, apparently we're going to Wano this summer if everything is, uh, goes according to plan, if everything's consistent with you know, what uh, was previously seen going on. So in that case, it looks like we're going to go to Zo and then possibly Wano Kuni, uh, probably Wano Kuni, I should say. So it looks like we're not going to be going to that winter island until later on. I believe that the motif of the Wizard of Oz will begin the second they step on to the island of Zo. Now, uh, before you guys say Zo is Oz backwards, you know, Zo in, in Japanese refers to the elephant, uh, the way it's spelled. But however, seeing as how we've seen so many uh, previous islands that whose names uh, influence or describe the island that they that talk about, unless there's a giant elephant formation or the island is filled with elephants. Uh, I do think that Oda did this in order to convey maybe the, the possibility that we're, that we're sort of stepping into Oz, the world of Oz. So, I do believe that this will be the starting point for this whole motif. That starting in Zoe, we'll sort of see a lot of the, what happens in the Wizard of Oz start to play out. Now, if this does end up being true, then that might mean that we might finally get to see the Mink Men, which would be analogous to the uh, Munchkins from the Munchkin Country, which is the first place that um, the lady from the Wizard of Oz visits, you know, first place Dorothy visits. So it'd be pretty cool. I mean, if you guys have seen EOP's video, like I said, you'll see exactly what a Mink is, and the fact that they have men after it means that these are probably humanoid-looking uh, Minks. Um, this could indicate that maybe they're short, I don't know, but that definitely could be a case if it is the starting point for this whole Oz motif. And now we'll have to wait and see if we'll see anything else uh, throughout maybe Wano Kuni, maybe uh, some other references, uh, maybe Big Mam also with uh, the witch, uh, because there's a couple witches in the story, so she could be uh, any of those. Um, but that's, that's definitely um, a cool thing that could happen if uh, that is the starting point. Now. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the main thing when it comes to the Wizard of Oz that people know, think of is the three characters of the Lion, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man. Now people have been trying to guess who these guys are for a long time, a ton of guesses, a ton of speculation, um, and I'll give you some of the guys, some of the ones that people speculate on. Some people say Peckham's is the Lion, some people say Kaido is the Lion. Uh, one of the best ones I've heard is that the Kid, Pooh, uh, Hawkins Alliance represents the three. You have Kid, the Tin Man, whose arm is now all metal. You have um, Scratch Man and Pooh, who represents to the Cowardly Lion, since he's, you know, he's sort of cowardly in the, in the way that he fights. Uh, you have a, uh, Hawkins, who obviously looks like the, the Scarecrow, uh, due to his Devil Fruit. Um, but I think that I finally pinpointed who these guys are. Uh, and they all happen to be on Kaido's favorite island. You have Scotch, the Scarecrow. Uh, just by looking at him, you can tell he represents the Scarecrow. Some people think he represents the Tin Man, but here is the real Tin Man. 
This is again from the Caribou Flash, uh, uh, Caribou Side Story cover story, and right here you guys can see the Tin Man. I mean, what uh, what better representation of a Tin Man? This is what people think of when they think of a Tin Man. So there's the Tin Man. Uh, the guy next to him sort of looks like a lion, but I don't think that's him. He sort of gets fodderized during the uh, the cover story. So I, when it comes to the lion, I really think that it is the lion that I talked about in part two. If you guys remember, the, one of the last things that Leonardo da Vinci did, aka Vegapunk, was to build a mechanical lion for the king of France, aka Kaido, Napoleon. Um, and so that's definitely who I think the lion is going to be. And I, if you guys remember, the lion... Um, it has flowers. It is built to uh, to walk forward and then uh, reveal some flowers. Lions and flowers are two things that uh, definitely do not uh, associate with each other. So that definitely could represent to me the cowardly lion, not someone who you know looking to take over the territory and assert their dominance, but instead someone who's willing to give a flower to uh, you know maybe a princess or something. So uh, that definitely could be the cowardly lion. <laughs> it fits in perfectly. And the reason why I think that this is important is because. It, it, I don't believe that we're going to go to Emerald City until we meet these three individuals. In the story, you know, uh, the, the girl found these three uh, guys and uh, she went to Emerald City, with each of them hoping for a specific thing. So it, it wouldn't make any sense for us to visit the Emerald City uh, before we meet uh, Scotch, the Tin Man, and the Lion. So that's why I do believe that at some point, uh, maybe probably after Wano Kuni, Sabo and Luffy will arrive at that island. Uh, at least Sabo, and then he'll meet the uh, he'll meet these and destroy the factory, and then maybe the island after that is when we go to Emerald City. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Now, as to what Emerald City actually is, um, I'm gonna give you guys one guess. I have two ideas. The first one is just a guess, and it's the least likely of them, but there is a chance that the Emerald City is the city on the moon which Enel visited during his cover story. If you guys look, the moon that he went to is a green color. The Emerald City is a green city. In the novel, the reason it's emerald is because the citizens were forced to wear glasses when they entered the city. And these glasses were tinted green. So it was a way for the for the, the master of the Emerald City to trick everyone to think that it's emerald. But literally, all it, all, the, all it was is that the glasses made everything look green. So when you think of emerald, you think of green. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. The moon that he went to looks green, okay? So there's that, and then we haven't really seen the color of the buildings inside of the uh, of that city. So, you know, I can definitely see that being an Emerald City because you also have the Automata, which are Munchkins, you know, short people. Uh, so that could fit in with that motif as well. Again, remember, Emerald City is something that most people don't believe exists. It's a legend, and, you know, I can definitely see it being a legend coming down from the um, the Skypeans or the people who came down from the moon and the reason no one's found it yet because it's on the moon so I can definitely see that being a possibility now I do want to say that the reason why this guess is sort of out there is because how are they gonna get to the moon I mean there are a couple of ways that you can do it I mean we saw NL do it so it's not impossible but that's definitely a big obstacle that I see uh, with this theory is that you know how are they gonna get up there now the other possibility is that the Emerald City is underground, like uh, everything One Piece said. We've been to the sky, we've been to uh, underwater. Uh, the only thing left is, you know, into the earth. So, with that said, you know, maybe, uh, like I said, I think that it might happen on an island after the um, after the Winter Island. But if you guys remember, there's mountains being built in the background that are actually built after the time skip. And which is an underground heating system to heat up the entire island. What if there is maybe something underneath there that's helping fuel it? Maybe that's what, the reason why uh, Vegapunk is able to create those mountains, and that's because of the fact that he, there's something that he can work with on, underground. Now, this again, this one's also a bit far fetched, um, but that is a possibility. I'm still going to stick with the fact that maybe, or that probably it's just an I it's going to be later on after that island. But I do believe that starting at Zo. Well, actually, let me recap. So, are they going to starting at Zo, where everybody's going to reunite with each other? Law's going to reunite with his crew. Possibly, Luffy's going to reunite with his crew. 
It may, and you know, this could possibly be uh, the gra the grave site for Ace and Whitebeard. I'm gonna stick to that. Uh, you know, this was Bex 26 um, idea, and it's not something that I reviewed very early on last year. Um, so I really heavily do believe that that is the case. And if the, if so, and if Sabo does end up coming, this will make a very good moment between Luffy, Sabo, finally able to uh, you know give their thoughts and reconcile with. Uh, the, the ace so I think that would be a very beautiful moment and I really do hope that that is what happens being there Kinemon's gonna find out that Whitebeard's dead and he's gonna you know tell pretty much everything that's going on with his island so they're gonna go to Wanakuni to help him out afterwards they're going to go to um, the Winter Island and from there maybe uh, Emerald City so that's gonna do it for my thoughts on Emerald City I'm going to leave a link down below to Beck26's uh, theory that I reviewed a while ago because uh, it does uh, it does predict that we would go to Zo, Wanakuni, and then Kaido's favorite island, which it does seem like it's going to be the case, and he made that prediction a long time ago. So um, if that doesn't look the case, you know, it's going to be awesome. He makes some great theories, so make sure to check him out. Like always, I've plugged him a couple times and plugged him once more and probably a lot more to come. So... Uh, check that out down in the link. Also, uh, like I said, if, uh, make sure to check out everything One Piece's oh, Emerald City review because he goes over a lot of the basics, a lot of the basics that people are using now to to make their own theories and uh, predictions. So uh, there's that. And uh, just want to say um, one, uh, maybe one or two more Kaido theories uh, to review. I still got to review. Um, I still got to talk about you know what I think is uh, I guess his power is. Um, and maybe one or two other things. So be on the lookout for those later on. Um, until next time, guys, uh, thanks for watching and peace.